The practical driving test in Germany. Objective and transparent. During the practical driving test, the driving license examiner determines the driving skills of the candidate. This film shows where the requirements for the candidate are described and how the performance is evaluated, documented and reported back. The examiner uses an electronic test protocol, EPP. This protocol is a program that illustrates the current test content and thus the requirements for the candidate. The examiner uses it as an overview of the content to be tested, meaning the test requirements and as a documentation tool. After the examiner has introduced himself to the candidate and the driving instructor, he checks the identity of the candidate and verify whether the candidate has completed the prescribed training content. The examiner then asks the candidate to perform all personal adjustments of the vehicle, seat, mirror, etc. The examiner observes whether the candidate pays attention to all necessary adjustments and records the result in the EPP. A safety check is done before the test drive can begin. For this safety check, the candidate must perform sample checks to ensure that the vehicle is in proper operating condition. The examiner then explains the procedure of the test drive, gives general information and wishes the candidate every success. The test drive can begin. During the test drive, the candidate must fulfill certain requirements. He is observed by the examiner and his skills are evaluated and documented. Finally, the examiner makes his decision as to whether the candidate has sufficient driving skills or not. The requirements for the test drive and the evaluation criteria are described in the catalogue of driving tasks. Driving tasks and areas of driving competence, also referred to as observation categories, are defined here. The catalogue of driving tasks is available for all driving license classes and is part of the examination guidelines. Driving tasks are specific traffic situations in which the candidate has to prove his driving skills. There is a total of eight driving tasks, some of which are broken down into partial driving tasks. This includes, for example, intersections, roundabouts, overtaking, level crossings, bus stops and pedestrian crossings. When completing the driving tasks, certain action requirements must be met. These can be assigned to the five driving competency areas. Observation of traffic, positioning of the vehicle on the road, adaptation of speed, communication and handling of the vehicle environmentally friendly driving style. What does the structure of the catalogue of driving tasks look like? First, each driving task or partial driving task is defined. This is followed by the principal algorithm of action, which describes the actions that are basically to be carried out to correctly master the driving task. Situation subclasses are defined for some driving tasks. There are special forms of a driving task that require special driving behavior. For example, the partial driving task, turning left at crossroads and junctions, is subdivided into the situation subclasses, right before left, with traffic signs that regulate the right of way, with traffic lights, and with regulation of traffic by police officers. The core of the catalogue of driving tasks are the principal requirements for action described for each driving task. Here, the required behaviour is specified in detail for each of the five areas of driving competence. The description of variations of requirements of action is necessary if special action requirements arise due to the situation subclasses. Finally, for an objective and transparent test evaluation, the catalogue of driving tasks contains the evaluation criteria of a driving task. In addition to examples of above average performance, minor mistakes and severe mistakes, including serious mistakes that lead to the immediate termination of the test, are defined. The hazard potential is decisive for the classification of an evaluation criterion. Indicators in the sense of standard examples were defined for some evaluation criteria. For example, there is information on distances, speeds and error correction times.
which serve as a guide for the examiner when assessing performance. Let's look at an example of how the requirements of the catalogue of driving tasks are reflected in the execution of the test. The examiner asks the candidate to turn right at the next intersection. The examiner uses the electronic test protocol to document the test performance. Positive performances and mistakes are specifically documented. As soon as the opportunity arises after an event to be recorded, the examiner can document the relevant behavior with just a few clicks. Within the driving task, he selects the appropriate evaluation criterion with reference to a driving competence area. Of course, the basic driving tasks are also documented in the electronic test protocol. Here, the protocol supports the examiner in the selection and evaluation of the basic driving tasks. This way, the examiner documents all special occurrences during the test drive. Of course, it is not necessary to document every single driving task. If the candidate drives as expected, there is no need to document anything during the drive. The examiner can therefore concentrate primarily on observing the candidate. If the candidate did something wrong, the examiner will attempt to create a similar situation again later if possible. This way, he can determine whether it is a one-time or a recurring misconduct. The examiner adjusts the further course of the examination according to the test performance of the candidate. This basic procedure is called adaptive test strategy. This means that in a certain way, the progress of the test depends on what has happened so far. After the test drive, the examiner assesses the driving skills of the candidate. In this process, he rates every driving task and every area of driving competence across all situations as very good, good, sufficient or insufficient. If necessary, he asks the candidate to be patient while he concludes the evaluation. Based on this assessment of driving skills, the examiner then decides whether the candidate has passed the test. At the end of the test, the examiner provides a detailed feedback to the candidate. The examiner announces the result of the test. He explains his assessment of the five areas of driving competence and selected driving tasks that are decisive for the test evaluation. To justify this, he cites specific events that occurred during test that he observed. The feedback ends with a summarized overall impression and with tips for further developing the driving skills. After the detailed feedback, the examiner says goodbye. The candidate gets a written feedback shortly after the test. This is usually provided electronically. Each candidate receives a written feedback on his performance, which can be used to further acquire driving skills after passing or failing the test. In addition to the test result, the written feedback, in particular, includes the examiner's overall assessment of the five driving competence areas and the eight driving tasks. If a one of these was not rated very good, the candidate will receive appropriate information on what he can improve in the future. Finally, the written feedback also contains the individual particularly good performances and mistakes. The comprehensive description of the requirements combined with a modern and uniform test documentation as well as a detailed performance feedback have a positive effect on the most important people in the process of preparing novice drivers, the novice drivers themselves.